By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wands praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic Wand has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic Wand's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from a appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. On today's show, I'm talking about better ways to date as well as helping you through your bedroom conundrums. Topics include how to date with intention instead of just winging it. What to do when it seems like your partner prefers their vibrators to having sex with you. Ways to get out of your head during sex so you can actually enjoy yourself and everyone's favorite topic, squirting. All this and more. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, check out sexwithemily.com. We love when you subscribe to our podcast and comment on it wherever you listen to podcasts. We so appreciate it. You can also check me out five days a week, Monday through Friday on Sirius XM Radio Stars Channel 109. I am there 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific, 8 to 10 East. And it's been amazing to reach so many more people helping you out with your sex and relationship questions. If you want a free 30-day trial, visit sexwithemily.com slash SXM. You can still call in during those times and ask your questions, 888-947-8277. And you can also find us on all social media at Sex with Emily. Hope you guys enjoy today's show. It's actually a compilation from some of our favorite moments on the series show. So let us know what you think. And thanks for listening. It's been a great week of shows, huh, Jamie? It has. It always is. It always is. And I've been thinking a lot. I always do. I go home. You know, they say you shouldn't take your work home with you, but I can't help it. It's sex. It's love. It's dating. It's everywhere, even in my own life. But I was thinking that we've talked so much about sex, (laughs) everything about sex and love and all those things. And I was like, God, you know, it's kind of like they say this can be the breaking up, the dumping season. A lot of people end relationships right now around this time of year. Mm -hmm. I guess so all the time though. They're ending, they're starting. They're starting because that's a cuffing season. Mm -hmm. Very confusing. But sometimes you don't want to deal with them over the holidays and you break up, but you might also be meeting someone new. And I thought what you guys don't know is that we talk a lot about dating, dating apps, how to find someone, should you break up with someone on our podcast, Mm -hmm. which I've been doing for a long time. So I thought, I was thinking about some of the things that we could talk about tonight about dating. Like, are you dating someone new? Are you dating a few people? I can help you with all that stuff. And so there are some top tips and I'm like, I thought I haven't told you about these things yet that I, I believe are would be very helpful for you and that are helpful in all dating situations, which is not easy right now. I mean, it's not. I get it. Everyone always thinks wherever they live, they live in the very worst town ever to date in. They like I, People always say that. Like they're like, when I was in San Francisco, they're like, oh God, it's the worst town. <laughs> no, you know, like check your balls at the Golden Gate Bridge. Like just really like there's no men don't ask you out. And then in LA, everyone thinks the guys are like too into themselves and women just aren't available. Whatever. Everyone has a story. And then New York, they say the same thing. And then if you live in the middle of the States, you're like, there's no one here. But I always believe, and I know this to be true, that first of all, wherever you go, there you are. So it's not like you have to move somewhere else and you're going to find that person. But there's single people anywhere, everywhere. In fact, there's more single people now on the planet. Than ever. Than ever before. 
So it's kind of a good time to be single. I would say so. And more ways to date and meet people. It is. Yes. Technology. Technology. And people are like, (laughs) oh God, I can't do the apps. Like I'm, because here's the thing about the apps and we have a lot to say about that, but tonight I'm just going to focus on some basic dating stuff, but this is what I want to say about the apps and definitely call me with your questions. If you have questions about them, triple eight, 94 stars is that if you still, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I've been single for a while and I haven't met anyone, but I'm not going to do the apps because the apps, people just want to hook up or everyone's an asshole. It's not true. Like, we know ways to help you with that as well. And that I think it's a service to yourself. It's a numbers game. It is. And I know plenty of people that have had actually, you know, success. Like, they are in love. They've gotten married. They've, you know. So many babies. The whole thing. Like, there's whole lives that happen. So, it's there's still not that stigma. You don't have to whisper that I met someone online. So, I just want to say that. But first starting about dating is that if you are dating right now, And you're like, you know, I just, it's been challenging or I'm not sure. Like, have you done this yet? Have you really thought about yourself and what you actually want? Who are you as a person? What do you want out of life? What are your plans for your career? Like, what, like, who are you? Because the more we know about ourselves, then we know what do I want in a relationship? And then my next step is like, do you know what you want in a partner? Like, Have you really thought about that? Mm -hmm. Like, what's important to you? What are your deal breakers? And, you know, because I think that sometimes it's like when you go shopping and you're not really looking for anything in particular and you just end up like buying a bunch of stuff you don't need. I do that all the time. All the time. In fact, I'm starting to stop doing that. I'm like, I don't need anything. Like, (laughs) I should just go home and try my clothes. Like, do I really need another pair of boots? But dating can get frustrating like that when you're like, I'm not really sure. So when you get clear, 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 like you literally write it out. And there's some great books on it and great. I used to love this book. I used to recommend this, If the Buddha Dated. Because I thought it was cool because it made you really go deep and asked you all these questions down to like the superficial things like they have to be this height and whatever to like, like deeply in your soul. Like, how do you want to feel with this person? So define it however you want. Like, just define it, but know that like get specific and then know like if someone's a smoker, like I'm out. Someone's not my religion. That's not going to work for me. Just things that you know. Yeah. Like why waste time on things that you know? Yeah. Why are, waste time? Aren't going to serve you. Exactly. And the other thing is, you guys, here's the thing. Now, a lot of people think about um, casually, like a lot of people are casually dating right now. There's a lot of people I know I hear from who are like, you've been married for 20 years and you just got out of a relationship, a marriage or a long-term thing. And you're like, I don't even know how to date anymore. Like the apps weren't around. People didn't text back when I was dating. You know, I got fixed up with my partner. Like, what do we do? And I think, you know, People are texting more now. They might not talk right away, but if you've met someone and you want to make sure, I think it's okay to pick up the phone and have a call first so you don't waste time. And I also think casually dating a few people is another thing that people don't Mm -hmm. realize is that it's okay to date a few people at once. Like I think people are used to like, well, I met someone, I've gone on a date with someone, Mm -hmm. and so I'm going to assume that it's it's only about the two of us and that they're probably not dating anyone or maybe it's going to... I should just stick with one person. And I think if you haven't dated in a while or if you're just starting a date or wherever you're at, it's okay to be dating several people and you don't have to feel guilty or bad or weird. Yeah, because I mean, we have this notion that we're supposed to put all of our time and our efforts into this one person we just met, but then you're kind of wasting energy on something that might not work out when you could, you know, take things slower with that person and date a couple other people see which one's giving you the most exactly that you like the best stuff that you like and I think that's important for everything like I say this often about a therapist if you're looking for a therapist I'm like it's a real relationship you are entering into it's okay to go see two or three you're not going to love every therapist and the same goes for dating (laughs) and I also think it's true though like you're not going to like them right no it's it's true. true right I'm used to I'm actually more used to dating multiple people in at once than being in with one person, one person. So whatever, what I'm in now is kind of, it's not new to me, but I, it's been quite some time. Right. Since you I've haven't been the cat. You haven't been juggling. But I think the thing is, is too, is about being honest about the fact that you are yes. dating multiple people. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. I think that the more honest and authentic we are. So this is kind of what I'm, this is what I'm telling you now is that be honest with yourself and then be honest 
with your the people you're dating that mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm seeing other people and just assume that they probably are too. If you haven't had the conversation about being exclusive with someone, I guarantee it, they're dating other people. So, and then, you know, be be real about what kind of relationship you want. Like if you know, like I am just looking for casual sex mm-hmm. or I'm dating other people or I'm actually looking for a long-term relationship. I am want to have kids. You know, whatever you know, like be clear about that and, and you know, talk about it right away so we don't waste time. And the other thing that I think that we forget when people are like going back to like, I'm just throwing out all the things that I've been in, in my mind about this is that we often think that we can't, we only have to meet someone in a very specific way. Like either someone introduces us or we meet him on a dating app. But I want you guys to put this in your minds. Be open to meeting people anywhere, anywhere you go. And then be almost expecting it because I think now this is what I've noticed lately. And we've talked about this, James, how we're so on our phones mm-hmm. all the time that that we were missing. Like whenever you walk into a, a store, like I was in a waiting room the other day or getting my tires fixed, like everyone was staring at their phone. Like usually in the mm-hmm. back and you'd be like, back in the day, you'd be like, hey, how you doing? Because you have nothing to do. There's yeah. no great magazines in the car shop. There never is. They have the like car <laughs> magazines. I don't want to read them. You would just talk to someone because like my car is taking longer. But now we're all of our, we have our little entertainment center with us. So we're not meeting people. So you could be at the gym in line at the grocery store. doesn't matter. Like in the subway, like they're, single people they're in front of you just start talking to them say hi isn't that how people like a lot of times too people always want that meet cute yes thing whatever happens like you're not gonna get that meet cute if you're not being open Open to to meeting yes exactly like it's just not gonna happen if you're like shut down so maybe put the phone down if you're somewhere where you're like oh i could meet someone or just know that everywhere is potential not that i'm like dating right now but i did actually there have been a few times when i've been out and I'm even even though I am like committed when I'm like at a place by myself, if I'm waiting for a friend or whatever, I did make a conscious effort to put my phone down and not be staring at it. Oh, and just to be like, because one, it makes you feel more comfortable when you're by yourself at places, because I feel like a lot of times people are like, I need a friend. I need right. something. But kind of just I envy those people that go out on their own and they just seem content. Yeah. So I'm trying to do that. That's more. good. That's mature. You know, and like, evolved. It feels, it no, feels, I mean, like I always say that, not like a mature human, but like a mature in our yeah. digital. I'm trying to keep my phone outside the bedroom at night. <laughs> like I'm good. trying to be mature the way I'm managing my technology. All those things. So I think that's true. Like we meet, you know, you just meet people out in the world, and if you meet someone that you like, I think ask them out. Like just do it and let them know. Like be specific, and if you do ask someone out, have a plan in mind. Now, remember mm-hmm. this because we still get emails and questions from people all the time. But like, why did this person ask me out and not have a plan? Or like, we all want someone to, like, if you do the asking, think of something to do. And I don't think the date has to be elaborate. Mm-mm. I don't think you need to spend a lot of money. You could be creative. Or if you're just the kind of person that wants me for coffee and a drink and not commit, that's fine. But like, have the plan. Do you ask people out or I have ha- you? I have not asked anyone out i'm trying to think if i ever have i've no i haven't but i would i've always been in relationships or i've met someone and i've mutually we've mutually liked each other ah have you asked anyone out i have i have you have i'm very forward i know i love that everything about you forward it's good it's i think that women that's an and i used to say years ago no kind of like you're taking that power away or men want to be chasing as a whole thing but i think we all should be asking people if we find someone interesting hey let's let's go out let's do something like follow through if you meet someone you have that connection don't wait for that other person Mm -hmm. and I hear from men all the time who are like they hear years later someone liked them and they're like I wish I knew because I never asked her out or she was gonna ask me out and this goes for same sex same sex couples of course Mm -hmm. anywhere you are like if you see someone like you just just be honest I think we're all really afraid of rejection Mm -hmm. and being hurt in every situation and so I think we just can't take it personally if someone's going to say no to us and then also if you are on the apps or let's say you're on the apps or you're just going on a date mm-hmm. this is the other thing that people I used to get tripped up on this too and who knows could happen again but now that we're talking about it if you go out with someone on a date and you think it was great and they don't call you ask you out again or vice versa or they don't yeah and in your mind you're feeling like what I do wrong and you're trying to analyze it maybe you want a few dates 
If you went on three dates with someone, that should be the end that we hear. Like, we shouldn't talk about it anymore. You shouldn't think about it. You shouldn't feel bad about yourself. You know, just keep getting back out there again. Like, don't mm-hmm. let that weigh you down. The most important thing is to get out, keep dating, and don't keep asking. Like, don't keep thinking, like, what did I do wrong and obsessed? Because when you are dating and you're in that world, you can feel like, you can just start to feel bad about yourself. Like there's nobody, why don't people like me? And was it something I said or wore or did? And the truth is, you did, it doesn't matter why you didn't get ass out again. It could be a million reasons and it's probably not the things that you're worried about. Exactly. And I think a lot of us, and I used to feel this way, everyone needs to like me. Yes. I like, I need everyone that I meet to like me. Otherwise my life is not fulfilled. And I've had to work to get past that. Cause not, it's, there are so many people in the planet. There's no way. Not everyone's going to like you people pleasing it's true that's a good point too because on dates I've done that too like I think that a lot of times we go into dates as the pleasers and we're like I don't even know how I feel about this person that's sitting across from me on this date I'm just gonna try to get them to like me Mm -hmm. so I'm not even paying attention if I like them because I want the I want them to like me and then I'll decide but Mm -hmm. when you're on a date that is such a great time to be super present and just think like how do I feel right now how Mm -hmm. is this person making me feel like, it's about both of you together because I think there'd be a lot less confusion if we did all, like, were present, paid attention to, like, messaging from people and whatever they're making us feel. Yeah, because you get so hung up on the rejection that you forget to t- ask yourself, but do I, did I even want to date yeah. this person? Would either? I ever want to see this person again? Do I want to kiss him? Am I attracted to this person? So, and I think one of the most important things, too, is to think about your past. Like, what... This is an important lesson that I think sometimes we go through breakups and we just like are angry or something bad happened and we're like, you know, my, my ex was an asshole and everyone's an asshole. But I think the most, we do our best learning about ourselves, like really important lessons we learn in relationships with people. And then when we break up, it's a great time to look at what we've learned. Like, what did I learn from this relationship? What was my part in it? That's a big one, especially if you've been dating for a long time and there's a commonality. Guess what? It's you, right? Not the person. You dated 10 people and every time there's some kind of issue around sex or intimacy or something, you're like, oh, what is my part in it? Because every relationship is 50-50. And I'm going to say it this way, even if someone cheated and did the the, uh, unthinkable, Mm -hmm. you have a part in that in some way, like in your reaction to it in your not you didn't make someone cheat on you people are gonna be like i swear i was the best yeah. part person ever <laughs> i mean like what did you rather than just being angry that mm-hmm. your partner cheated like that doesn't mean that the whole relationship was horrible there's still parts i mean the whole you know what i'm saying there was probably some yeah. good things and there's still lessons to learn if something really bad happened at the end is my point definitely so it doesn't mean like oh but he was just a jerk or she was a bitch or whatever it is so look at that like it's such good that's why i think it's important to try to not jump right into a relationship when you're single and it's important to take time to like really learn about who you are again single and then what you want once you get back out there. Mm-hmm. And I used to not do that because I felt like I would go from one to the next because I didn't like being alone. And then I realized, wait, who the hell is Emily without a man? Like, who am I in the world? So then I would take that time and then it was a lot clearer when I started dating again, like what the hell do I want? All right, we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, your calls. <music> We have Melissa, 51, in your home state of Michigan, (gasps) and she's having a hard time getting out of her head while having sex. Okay. Hey, Melissa from Michigan. Hi. Hi. Thanks for calling. Is it cold there right now? Yes. I know. (laughs) Now I'm going to be in my head about that, thinking, I'm so glad I'm not there right now. But okay, tell me what's going on, Melissa. Well, you know, I have a great husband, and I do have a really good sex life, but I cannot orgasm unless I am, like, doing it myself, and I'm out of my head, because I can't shut my brain off, because I'm thinking of everything else, and God forbid if he tries to touch me anywhere while I'm trying to do something, or he tries to do it because he, like, gets frustrated... Not like in a mad way, but right. he would love to be able to help me do it, right. but I can't. I'm, right. like, so I'm this, like almost like a control freak. Right, like where, okay. You know what? 
I totally get. So you, so sometimes what's happening is you're saying during when you guys are actually having sex and he tries to touch you or just when he tries to touch you, you're saying, right, during sex, he'll try to like help you have the orgasm. Hello? Hi. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Okay, Melissa, we're we're still going. Yeah. Okay, so is this like, so when you're having sex and he tries to touch you or help you along, you're like, no, I've got this. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is really common. Or so if I'm or if I'm doing it myself and he tries to touch me in any other area, right. I'm like, Oh, don't do that because I can't think of you doing that while I'm trying to do this. Right. Okay. So you like a you have a very specific way that you orgasm and you do not Yeah. Right. So there's that. So in your in your head so but you can orgasm. Because there's two, because th- you asked me about yeah, two that yeah. you, right, that, can you orgasm, so it's only on your own with your hands? Yes. Wait, so not during intercourse? No. Okay. That, okay. I got it. That's No, yeah. I mean, it's it's common. It's really, it's very common for women. Only 30% of women have had orgasms during intercourse without a lot of clitoral stimulation. And even then, you know, not every time. So, I mean, there's really nothing wrong here. But what I would say is if you want to get out of your head and be in the moment, the best thing to do is to be more mindful, like a mindfulness practice. And what I mean by that is, you know, I know mindfulness is all the buzz, you know, I'm not going to make you go like sit on top of a mountaintop and <laughs> meditate for hours. But what I want to say is that when you think of it this way, when you're in your head and you're like, oh my God, I'm, he's going to touch me in a weird way or did I turn off the curling iron or someone to come in or the kids, you know, our brain is going crazy. That means that the blood is leaving our genitals and it's going to our brains. And so we can no longer be in our bodies. And so my the, a great mindfulness practice is to, in the moment when that's happening, think about, so your brain's going, to, oh God, why is he touching me? Go to what you're feeling in the moment. So all your, engage all your senses. So what are you smelling? Maybe it's the candle you lit. And what, you know, what are you tasting? Maybe it's like his lips when you tasted him. Or maybe it's the glass of wine you just had. And what are you listening to? It's the music. So what do you, how does his skin feel underneath you? And so when you ground yourself into your senses, then you are, you are in the present moment. There's nothing else that can distract you because you're there. And then your brain's going to come back and going, but wait, what about this? And then you're not, I'm going to go back to what I'm smelling, what I'm hearing, what I'm tasting. And the more you do that practice and you bring yourself back to the moment, you'll be more in touch with your body and what you feel and more likely to orgasm and be more open to maybe his touches. All right, I'm going to try it. Okay, please do. You got this. Try something different (laughs) tonight. Really? You know, be open to it. When you're masturbating too, you can experiment with like a lot of this practice that can help you. So you got this, Melissa. Try it out. Stay warm this winter in Michigan and practice having some great sex. Richard, 55 in Illinois. His wife rathers a vibrator than sex. Hey, Richard. Hey. Hey. Okay. So your wife prefers a vibrator over you is what you're saying. Tell me more about this. Well... (laughs) She, uh, after she had our son, she had, a couple of years later, she ended up having a hysterect. Okay. Oh, I, I mean, that all the drive and everything went out the window after that. Does she have, and, okay, her, her sex drive went out the window? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. And, and s- I finally got her to start using the vibrator, and then I found one she really likes, and that's all she wants now. Okay. Well, I think, um, does she still, are you guys still intimate? Like, do you still, you know, is there still foreplay and kissing and touching? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Do you guys use it together? I use it, and I usually like to tease her enough to where she'll take it to it herself. Okay. To that point, and then, you know, she's that's great to me, or however you want to say it. Oh, okay. So I think I, you know, I'm just try I'm just trying to figure out how to get back into the other part of it. <laughs> right. So she's not even letting you enter her, if you will. Right. So you haven't had intercourse where your penis goes into her vagina, is what you're saying. Uh, not for quite a while. Okay. But now is this vibrator you got or is it like a is it a insertion vibrator or is it a clitoral vibe? It's a clitoral vibe. Okay. So the thing is, she might just have to, you know, she might have have had some pain with the hysterectomy or some some other like, you know, stuff that's happened since then where she might, you know, 
need some easing back into it because the truth is using a clitoral vibe during intercourse can feel amazing. So I think that that would be, you know, as your wife, you guys have been together, that it would be great, you know, not to shame her about it, but to be like, hey, babe, I miss, like, I want to feel, I want to be inside of you and feel it. We could still use the toy. That's how a lot of women orgasm, like so many women, because they need that extra clitoral stimulation during, during intercourse. So I think if you let her know, like not in the bedroom, not when it's happening, not in the moment, and not even right after you guys have sex or don't have sex, as it were, if afterwards you guys talk when you're like, you know, having breakfast or you're in a comfortable place when you're relaxed, say, hey, you know, I I love you and I I, I really, I love having sex with you and I, you know, what could we do here? Let's try to figure out something else that works. It's really important to me to feel connected. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Good. Yeah. Sometimes just the way we say it, you know? She never had our son. She had a C-section, so everything's kind of like shrunk down. Yeah, it's tr- she had a C-section. She's got some pain. She had a hysterectomy. And if she's having pain, she should go call, talk to her doctor or pelvic floor specialist. There's a lot going on. But first, have the talk with her. Thank you so much for calling, Richard. We are really running the age gamut, as you said. We're going to go to Steve. He's 71 in Pennsylvania and has a question about oral sex. All right. That's right, Steve. Keep it going. Hi, Emily. Hi. Hi. Hi, Emily. Hey, Steve. Thanks for taking my uh, my question. And your mother's adorable. <laughs> she is. She's the best. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, um, what I'm calling about is um, I, I really uh, am not, I'm kind of impartial about oral sex for me, but my my wife is, uh, is kind of... Uh, difficult as far as allowing me to perform oral sex on her. Okay. We're both health professionals, and she just has some hang-ups about um, possibilities of infection, I think, is, is one thing. Okay. And I have, have talk, talked with her a number of times about it, but I just can't seem to break that barrier. Hmm. I'm very willing to do that for her, but she doesn't just doesn't want me to do it. Okay. The bottom line. How long have you guys been together? 43 years. 43 years, and you've never performed oral sex on her? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, but it's something that I would like to do more often, and she's just very reluctant about it. Okay. I mean, the truth is, did she like it 40 years ago, or it's never been her jam, her thing? Um, I think she didn't dislike it. I don't not, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, whether I did everything the proper way and everything, but I just... It's a process. I just don't, I don't know. Well, here, yeah, it's he, a process. Okay, well, here's the thing. I mean, for, you can't force anyone, right? You can't be like, I'm going to do it, but she might need to... So if she is concerned, though, about health concerns, which I'm not sure if you guys are monogamous and you're together, there shouldn't be a lot of health concerns, although she could. you could use a dental dam. If you guys are health professionals, you know that. And for a lot of women, it's kind of like a condom, right? So you can even make one out of a condom. You just cut it in half and it's like a piece of like latex or you know some kind of material you put over her vulva when you are performing oral sex on her. So that's a way to keep it safe um, from getting any diseases or bacteria or anything like that. But the other thing is, um, does she like manual stimulation? Uh, oh, yeah. No problem that way. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you could just try like, um, you know, for some women, though, to be honest, they're too sensitive. It doesn't feel great, but maybe you have to ease into it or like you could, again, try the dental dam. She could, you know, you, you could both use your fingers and then just see, you know, I, I think if that's really the problem, use a dental dam and maybe she hasn't had it in so long or maybe she has some fears around. Maybe she feels like it tastes weird or you don't really want to do it, but it sounds like you, you do. So if you let her know how important it is to you and how much it turns you on, you know, she might just be surprised and let you do it like she's like oh i didn't realize that you know what i'm saying she might not know that this is really something that you so much want to do and it might make her feel like oh he really wants to do it i'm going to settle in and try it i haven't tried it in 30 years she might be like oh yeah oral sex is the best like i can't live without it you know but women call all the time and they're like oh yeah it's not my thing because some women are super sensitive so i say maybe reintroduce it with low pressure like, this might take okay. you bringing it up a few times, not in a nagging way, but in like, babe, I've been thinking, or I have fantasies about going down on you, and I just heard about this thing, the dental dam we could use, and you know what I mean? Kind of get her warmed up to it again. But if she says no, maybe you guys could try some other things. But I think um, maybe, yeah, it's been a while. She And again, if you let her know how enthusiastic you are and you want to try it and you've got some ideas to make it fun for her, then um, see what she says. And Very she, good. I appreciate your help. You're Emily. so welcome. That's Thanks, great. Steve. Okay, we have Jim, who's 52 in Indiana, and he wants to know what is a huge debate if squirting is like peeing. Oh, God. Okay. Hey, Jim. 
How you doing? Thanks for calling. Hey. Hey. Good. How are you? Good. Okay, squirting. Uh, my wife is extremely good at squirting. Great. <laughs> it's just all over me, and I just want to know if it's pee or not. Well, you okay. so many different things. I know. So you hear, like, there's traces of urine from the periurethral glands. You hear that it's partially urine. urine. But here's what I want to say to you. It might, yes, there is some urine in it. I'm not going to tell you there's not. Is it all urine? No, it's not. But I also don't think it matters. Like, sex is messy, sex is dirty. You're curious. <laughs> Curiosity, yes. It's not all urine. No, but there is some urine in it. So, it's true. I mean, there are times you could empty your bladder completely and still squirt, which has happened to me, happened to Jamie, a lot of women I know. So, it's, I, I don't, it's not completely urine, no. It's periurethral fluid, um, which is kind of like the prostate, but in women. And that's where it comes. Like, all these studies they've done, they show that there are traces of, of urine and other things, too. But I'm glad you're in a happily squirting lifestyle. <laughs> Even if it was, I don't think I would make her stop. Good. See, that's <laughs> what I like to hear. Just throw down some old beach towels and have a good time. Exactly. Right? Thank you very much. You got it. Okay, Jim, thank you for calling. Let's just talk about squirting, huh? <laughs> no, squirting is funny because I have to say that squirting was something that did not come up 15 years ago. And I do believe with porn being so ubiquitous that we're just seeing squirting everywhere. And that's like everyone wants to know, like, how do I squirt? How do I get my partner to squirt? Is it real? Is it not? And it is a thing that we can learn. Women can learn to squirt. But it is something that happens from um, from penetration to the the G spot, mm-hmm. repeated penetra- penetration, but also using like a a vibrator on your pubic mound, like the magic wand mm-hmm. for me has done that over like my pubic mound because it's indirect stimulation to the G spot. Oh, okay, yeah. So that has been a squirting thing for me too. And yeah, you can learn to do it typically with a finger or a toy or a partner. And having strong Kegel muscles can actually help having mm-hmm. control of your your pelvic floor. And all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I only recently, I want to say a year ago, re- maybe two years ago, realized that I could could do it. And now it happens fairly regularly with my partner. However, um, it's funny because I, I have to remind my partner, I'm like, just because I didn't squirt doesn't mean I didn't right. orgasm. Cause it's, does, and sometimes when I do squirt, I have to tell him to keep going because I'm like, that I did not orgasm yet, but yeah. I'm close. So true. Same with me. That's so good. You got to give advice. Yeah. You got to let him know that it doesn't actually, it's true. Women can squirt and not orgasm. And obviously we can orgasm without squirting. And sometimes you do squirt with orgasm. It's just. It's the luck of the draw. It's the luck of the draw, but you can, you know, it is a partner. You, you could learn with your partner. Take it on as a new hobby. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks to my amazing team, Ken, Sarah, producer, Jamie, and Michael. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. 